we are at the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21 in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we're here to see the Great Eastern Sun exhibit. It's about the Shambhala community in Nova Scotia. And when you enter the exhibit, first you learn about the history of Chigyam Trungpa Rinpoche's journey from Tibet all the way to Nova Scotia. His life, as we know, began uh, as a nomad, and then once he was recognized as the Trumpa Toku, he moved to Dutsitil Monastery, and this is actually his bedroom, and this is his drawing that appeared in Born in Tibet of the monastery at that time. Today, the monastery looks quite different, but it's also being rebuilt, hopefully back to its original splendor, and this is a photograph that's much more recent. In Tibet, Chigyam Trumpa Rinpoche was trained extensively by great teachers of the Kagyu and Nyingma tradition. One of his main teachers was Kempo Gangshar, a great uh, Kempo and crazy wisdom master. And this is a photograph of Trumpa Rimche and Kempo Gangshar taken not that long before the Vidyadara left Tibet. And then we also have a photograph of his root guru, Jamgong Kontrol of Sechen, a great Nyingma master with whom Chagyam Trumpa studied. Uh, from the age of nine until his departure from Tibet at the age of 20. Exhibit then takes us to the actual journey that he took on this map of Chigyam Trumpa Rimche's journey from Tibet to Nova Scotia, which began in Sermong and involved 10 months traveling over the Himalayas to India on foot and with horses. Then the Vidyadara stayed in, in India while he was the spiritual advisor at the uh, Young Lama School. And then, when he was accepted to go to Oxford University, he took a boat all the way to England, where he studied at Oxford, then opened the first meditation center that he established in the West at Sammy Ling. And then, within several years, he and his wife, Lady Diana Mukpo, traveled to North America. They landed first in Toronto and then went to Montreal where the Vidyadara taught for several months. And after that, they drove down to Karmacholin, which was called Tale of the Tiger at the time. And then he began his journey throughout North America, establishing his North American headquarters first in Boulder, Colorado, and then finally the international headquarters in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And the Vidyadara spent many months in Nova Scotia at different times. Also documenting this journey, we have photographs from India showing the time that he was, this, uh, was at the Young Lama School, and he's in the back row next to Sister Palmo. These are some of, the, some of his students. Also while he was at the Young Lama School, Allen Ginsberg and Gary Schneider and others of the Beat Generation were traveling through India. And after the Vidyadara's death, Allen Ginsberg discovered that he had a photograph of himself being shown around the Young Lama's school by Chogyam Trumpa. This is the photograph that was taken by Gary Schneider with Allen's writing about that. Also, while in India, the Vidyadara met a number of leaders, including Nehru. And this is a, documents that. And he began to meet a lot of Westerners for the first time. This photograph was actually taken in Bhutan, and it shows Richard Arthur and uh, the daughter of the Canadian ambassador to India when Trumpa Rinpoche met them. When in England, the Vidyadara studied at Oxford at St. Anthony's College, and this is his class photo, and you can see him on this side and Akong Rinpoche on the other, and other of their, of their fellow students. After living and studying in Oxford for some time, the Vidyadara was given this center in Scotland, um, Sam A. Ling. This is a photograph of him, obviously, in the foreground and a number of the other Tibetans and Westerners who were there at the time. The Vidyadara was, I suppose you could say, just too big for, to remain in England. And at a certain point, he became a British citizen, which he was very proud of. And this is his passport from the time when he was leaving uh, England to come to North America, and this is a very early photograph of him and Lady Diana. We show him teaching in Montreal. 
and an early photograph of him teaching at Karma Chilling, Tale of the Tiger. You can see what an early shrine looked like in those early days, a little bit different from nowadays. I also have a lovely photograph of Chogyam Trumpa with uh, his third son, Gesar Mokpo. It was taken around 1973, and we use this in this exhibit because Gesar lives in Nova Scotia now, and this exhibit was put together here <laughs> in Halifax. And this is a photograph from Naropa, the early days, Naropa University. And uh, you can see both the early banners and uh, some of the what, what used to be the Ikebana style of that era, <laughs> and uh, beaming Chogyam Trumpa, and finally Chogyam Trumpa presenting Shambhala in the Great Eastern Sun, <clears throat> taken by Mary Lang in Boston, 1979. So that gives us some idea of this tremendous journey that he made from a very medieval setting to the modern world, and then from there he came to Nova Scotia. And you have already seen the central piece in this exhibit and that's in a huge case that was designed for the exhibit and we included here the photographs of his journey in Nova Scotia. This is the very first time that the Vidyadra came here. He is getting off the ferry in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia in 1977. The Vidyadra was uh, in this photograph with the Apple Blossom Queen and her court. This is an annual festival to celebrate the, a the apples blossoming in Nova Scotia. And I think he obviously loved being photographed with the queen in her court. Then we also included in this exhibit something that we thought really represented his Nova Scotia manifestation, which is the Vidyadara in a kilt. And this is the uh, Elliott family, which is Diana Mukpo's family tartan. So he was entitled to wear that and wore it with a great deal of pride. So that gives us the journey that the Vajadara made, and then the exhibit moves into um, art and meditation as disciplines that characterize the Shambhala community. And so we have several calligraphies by Chogyam Trimpa Rimche, original calligraphies that were loaned for the exhibit. We wanted to have some things that were not just in Tibetan, so that people could relate more directly. And one of the things we were able to borrow is this beautiful love calligraphy. And then we also have a kind of more of a painting that he did with pen and ink. And um, we did include a print of the very beautiful uh, painting that he did in India of Milarepa's dream. Then, even in Tibet, the Vijayadara had shown an interest in photography, and the photo we have of Jamgan Kontrol was taken by him. When he got to India and then moved on further to the West, he really developed an abiding interest and uh, practice of contemplative photography. We have four of these photographs in the exhibit. In the upper left-hand corner, we have a photograph he took in Bhutan in 1968 of a dancer. And this was during the trip where he discovered the sadhana of Mahamudra Terma and took a lot of photos when he was there. Then below that, we have a photograph that was taken in Nova Scotia um, of a Texaco uh, station. And again, we think that is from, probably from Cape Breton. And now looking across the exhibit, you can see the meditation room. For this context, we created a very sort of neutral space um, representing, oh, and there you hear just on cue, <laughs> almost, the gong that rings every five minutes in this exhibit hall. And it was put there, um, it's kind of hidden away on an audio device, to uh, signal the beginning and end of meditation in this little room. But it actually also provides a moment of wakefulness and, and mindfulness as you tour the exhibit. Then the final part of the exhibit is focused on uh, the current leadership and the community and we have these beautiful cases which contain the seven riches of a Chakravartan, which were borrowed, were loaned to us from the, uh, by Sakyang Mipam Rinpoche. These originally belonged to the Vijadara Chagyam Trumpa Rinpoche, and they show the principles of a good life for a Dharma king or for any of us. And they include the queen representing the principle of companionship and intimacy in one's life, and then 
uh, below the queen, we see the jewels representing the principle of wealth. And uh, above, the elephant representing patience. And then in this case, the final piece is the minister who represents friends who will offer good counsel to you. Then in the second case, we have the general who represents the principle of um, a friend who will help you and protect you in your life. Next to that, the wheel, representing a sense of command or, con or feeling that everything is integrated in your world. And then the seventh jewel is the horse, who represents the fulfillment of action and exertion. And behind the case, you can see that we also have a number of photographs about the Sakyong and his life and family and work. They include a photograph of the Vidyadara and the Sakyong that was one that the Sakyong particularly likes. And uh, so we included that. It's taken by Hudson Shotwell. And then we wanted to show different aspects of the work that Mipa Murmuche is doing. So we have uh, the Sakyong as author, signing books. We have the Sakyong with the Dalai Lama uh, at the stupa at Shambhala Mountain Center. We have a photograph of the Sakyong in Tibet and uh, from one of his trips there. Then we have a kind of official portrait of him, Kongma Sakyong, Jamgon Mipam Rinpoche Jampel Trinli Dradal of Mukpo. Below that, we have something that seems quite current, which is Sakyong as runner and the mind of meditation. And then also we have a photograph from Being Brave with Ani Pema Chudran and, uh, and Acharya Adam Lobel. We have a photograph from the wedding. Uh, it's actually from the La Song a day before the wedding. So it's taken at the Halifax Citadel. And then below that, we have more recent history of the Sakyong and Sakyong Wangmo with their daughter, Jetson Drukmo Mukpo. We also were able to have a calligraphy by Sakyong Mipam to share with people in the exhibit. And then we wanted to also show the richness of the contributions that um, both the leadership, the teachers in Shambhala and others in Shambhala, the contributions they've made to the uh, literature. And um, so we have on the top shelf, we have books by Sakyong Mipam and by Trumpa Rimche. Then we have many, many books by others. Uh, and books in other languages to show just how vast the Dharma has spread. And then finally, we asked people in our Sangha to complete the sentence, I am here, and, and to say why or how they are here. And uh, we have almost 200 photographs with people speaking about their completing that sentence. And this goes along with the I am here Mukpo piece that opened um, the film. So for example, we have Jason Gavro saying, I am here practicing law and the Dharma, though some say they are mutually exclusive. Hudson Shotwell, I am here offering used books and serving good coffee and tea in a traditional coffee house environment. And Hongye Parsinger, I am here and loving it. Sort of, no, really. So you have lots of different people in the community uh, with lots of different approaches. And this is, I would have to say, a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> so this exhibit was put together both in commemoration of the 25th anniversary, which we're celebrating together this, during this week, and it was also to celebrate the sense of community. We focused on the Nova Scotia community because that's where we are, and that's what was wanted by the museum, but really this was in part offered to the community worldwide, and we're really happy to be able to share it with people uh, in this way through this film. I am here Mukpo. The six clans of Tibet are somewhat like Scottish clans in that they represent the strength and dignity of family and the power of joining your identity with others. 
I am from the Mukpo clan. Clan is a general way of relating to reality. Clan is a sense of how to rule the world and how to perceive the world at the same time. The heritage and benevolence of the Mukpo clan are my gift to you. Decency is the heritage of the Mukpos. Why not pass that decency down to you and the generations to come? You can share the Mukpo experience of helping others. My clan is your clan, and I am so pleased that you are joining my clan. My clan has never deceived anybody. I didn't come to America to sit on a comfy cushion. I came here, you realize, to promote and to present everything that the Mukpo clan has gone through. It's real, sweethearts. It takes tremendous effort to be genuine and real, and tonight such effort is being shared with you. Warriorship is being handed over to you. I am giving you the heart of the warrior tradition. The world does need some kind of help, and it had to be individual help. And uh, I would like to encourage any one of you to go out and uh, try to help people, namely, number one, to reduce speed. Number two, reduce aggression. Number three, try to encourage people that they could fall in love with something or other. That love is very much needed in this world. <laughs>